Welcome back to another episode of the Canon on the Boom and Bust channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today we are talking about DC and Warner Brothers and Discovery. So if you have not heard, uh, Discovery has purchased Warner Brothers um, from AT&T, and that happened a little bit ago, but uh, it's finally made final. The deal is closed. And so for those that don't know, before you can uh, actually start making any type of real moves, you you have to have the deal closed. So um, you, you can't really start making decisions uh, officially if the deal hasn't closed yet. So while some people speculate at what might have been going on and what plans Discovery has had, this is now the area where they get to, you know, actually do it. So um, we get a. Uh, an article from Variety talking about uh, some of the rumors going around with Discovery as they look ahead, not just to Warner Brothers, but to DC specifically. And so they essentially say two things. Uh, number one, that they are looking to make DC its own uh, content area as like a studio, what they call a vertical and that'd be similar to what you see with Marvel Studios, where it's a studio within Disney, just like Pixar, you know, just like Disney Animation, blah, blah, blah. And so currently with Warner Brothers, that hasn't been the case. It's just kind of been under the entertainment, you know, the movie arm. And so it hasn't had its own, like, dedicated thing, but that's what they're looking to do now. And the second thing that everybody's talking about is they mentioned that they want to get a Kevin Feige-like creator, or not creator, but executive that can be in charge of all of this. And so those are the two main things we're going to talk about. Um, and then I, I got some other stuff I want to say. So number one, let's start with the Kevin Feige thing, because that is getting a lot of buzz. First of all, that's not a direct quote or anything uh, at all. That's kind of the author saying what they would would uh how they would uh summarize what the conversations are now on top of that it wasn't even like a kevin feige like that wasn't even a quote it was just like somebody um like kevin feige uh <laughs> so kevin feige-esque if you want to go that route and so it's not like they're trying to get Kevin Feige or, you know, recreate necessarily. I think it's more about the position and the skill set, I, I assume, but more about the position. And so that's something that I've been saying for a long time. And I will say up front, all of this stuff that I'm about to say, I've been saying for a long time, a long time. Before I was even on YouTube, I was saying this in my first original podcast. Um, this was way back right around before Justice League. So, well, before Justice League started, that's when I started calling for a reboot. And prior to that is when I was saying that there's clearly no, like, person in charge. There's just a bunch of people being reactionary. And as much as I love a lot of the DC content, I mean, up into Justice League, I enjoyed everything. There was nothing I didn't like. Um, and now that we've gotten a little further, there's only a handful of projects I don't like, but for the most part, I like this stuff, but I'm not looking to restore the Snyderverse. I'm not looking to continue with this. As I said, I love Ben Affleck. I love Henry Cavill, uh, Gal Gadot's whatever to me, but I like these characters, but we needed a reboot because that's just the only logical way to keep it clean. And so now when we're talking about a potential overhaul with DC and the restructuring, a number of people are now talking about a uh, reboot. But again, I think what's been important for me is that they've never had somebody that is calling the shots. You had too many people that had segmented control. And I think, I don't really think you have to have one person. Honestly, I don't think that the way... Kevin Feige does is the only way to make it work. What I do think makes it work is that Kevin Feige plans it out. I don't really care that Kevin Feige is into the comics and he's into DC too. I hear a lot of people talk about how much he's into Marvel. He's into DC and Star Wars. Let's, let's, let's not act like he's just a Marvel fanboy. But I, I do think 
that um or i don't think that's the biggest thing i don't think it's the biggest thing that he's had a lot of producing experience which people talk about but you know at the same time he produced on a lot of bad movies and you could say a lot of people are like he learned lessons from that well a lot of people produce bad movies and don't get opportunities after so i don't think that's necessarily the case uh for me again the biggest thing about kevin feige is that he puts in the time to plan it out now that's that's always spoke to me but it really speaks to me now you know working in any area of you know uh industry you will find most people just want to go they just want to do stuff and they rarely want to take time to actually plan it out and i'm also an assessment person so that that's my bread and butter like i always say put in the extra time up front to make it smoother down the road but most people just want to do something fast and then you know play clean up later kevin feige wants to map it out and then and like i always say if you map it out and you have at least a, a path you could always adjust as you figure things out but it's going to be much more it's going to be more minor adjustments it's going to be much less significant than if you're just trying to figure it out on, as you go and so kevin feige puts in a lot of work to plan these things out and again yes it helps that he's had experience it helps that he's into the material but i don't necessarily think you got to go out and be like oh there's nobody that's exactly like kevin feige because i don't think anybody is exactly like him and that's okay you just have to have somebody that has the um, the skill set to plan this out and then, you know, put this together. That's the job of the producers. And even as an executive, that's the job to vet that stuff and make sure it all connects. So however you want to do that, if you want to get a story person to be under you, if you also want to get, you know, whatever, however you want to set it up, that's business. And so I, I've been saying that for a long time, not just because Kevin Feige and what he's done, but mainly because if you work in any projects, if you do any real type of work, you know that having too many people with the same level of power, a lot of times just makes things slow or makes things sloppy. And so that's kind of what uh, Warner Brothers and DC have been dealing with. So cool there. The second part is this idea about, uh, I believe they said, bringing things more closely aligned to maximize the property. And there's people talking about, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I like the way that sounds. You know, they're talking all types of stuff. I like what we got with the Batman. I like the Joker or Joker with Phoenix. I like these like one-off stories or these other Elseworld stories. Again, I've been calling for Elseworld stories way before they did the Joker. And so I I 100% agree you can tell stories outside of the main universe. But at the same time, I will say it's 100% right. Yes, the, way, the only way to maximize the earning potential or the value of the property is to make it more connected. And so you look at um mcu right now look at dr strange multiverse of madness that those tickets are selling crazy that's looking to make big money that isn't because people love the first dr strange that's because people are tuning in to see the next chapter in the story and so um again you know dc or not dc uh what's it called disney plus those shows we can't really put the same numbers to it or whatever and we know it's not as big but still they get views and it's big because it's part of the mcu and to be very honest whether people disagree or not and i'm sure some do not every movie is that great subjectively but it gets a bump because it's in the mcu same thing with the shows and so to me, that doesn't mean everything has to be connected for DC Universe, but you do need to establish a DC Universe. And so you talk about what's going on right now, like people keep saying, oh yeah, the DCEU, which is not a thing, and I will not call it again after that, that is still together. No, it is not. How and where? How, like, you don't even have 
Ben Affleck is Batman. You don't have Henry Cavill as Superman. How is that together? That, that, that universe makes no sense. And we may never know what the plan was with Flashpoint. A lot of people thought it might reset stuff and set up a reboot. It might do that now. But either way, you didn't have a true universe like you did before or anywhere near Marvel. And so, no, you, you got you to gotta get back on course. Again, I prefer a reboot, but I don't even think it necessarily has to be that. But more than likely, it seems like it might be. But you need to get to a point where we know what is happening and what these stories are doing. Because, again, that invests people into the saga. That invests people into new characters who they might not know, but they're part of the MCU, just like Shang-Chi. And so that that 100% needs to be the goal. Now, within that, you can still tell Elseworlds world stories. Um, what I've been saying... This year, I want to say this, not 22, but like uh, beginning of the school year. That's how I always think. Um, I've been kind of thinking and saying this year that we really need to just have for anybody trying to do a shared universe. They need to have, I don't know if it's a character or just a, a whatever, however you want to do an open in part. Just have somebody pull a book or look at a a, a a map of the galaxy or something and just zoom in and just boom earth 24 whatever it is and that way that tells us exactly where we are and again maybe you don't even need that maybe you just put the text up before the movie like as the movie starts the first thing you see is on earth 24 and so we will know that the prime universe where we're watching stuff is you know earth prime for us Anything that not within that is then given a different Earth. Now, the MCU currently doesn't do anything outside of the MCU. But if they want to, like everybody's talking about, how do you do an Andrew Garfield thing over at Sony? How do you do a Tobey Maguire movie? How do you do the Center Six? How do you bring these people over? And then, you know, we had the time. Uh, and timelines are different. But still, it's like, how do you do all these alternative things and still make it make sense. And and I think, again, that's the easiest way. That's the easiest way. So when the Batman 2 or whatever they call it pops on. And it's just like Earth 13. Okay, boom. The new DCU I know is Earth 1 or Earth Prime. That's, that's the main universe. That's where all the main stories are happening. If I watch a story that's not in Earth Prime, it's not part of the main story. And I think, again, same thing could be done with Marvel. I think that if, because some people seem to think Marvel's going to go away from the multiverse and all this after. I don't know. I don't think so. It, it just gives you too many outs. It makes writing too easy. So I, I don't know that they're going to go away from it. But if they stay within these timelines, within these multiverses, then I think they should do it too. It's just really, really easy and it's really convenient. So that's how I kind of feel about it. But anyway, that's it for me. Go down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for listening.